Welcome to part two of our $800 12-volt, 24-volt DC air conditioner install. In part one, we covered the unboxing as well as the disassembly into the individual components. So if you missed that, be sure to check it out. Link somewhere up there. And today we're going to be installing those individual parts of the air conditioner, charging it with refrigerant, firing it up, and we've got some really surprising power consumption numbers. So stick around till the end. Let's get to it. Well, first off, I have to say this AC is legit. It is awesome. Super happy with it. Um, you can't beat the price. It was easy to set up. Works really well. So let's get to it. I'll show you how we did it. So the first piece we're going to be mounting is the compressor motor, which we've separated from the condenser radiator. We're going to be mounting that on the frame rail, and I have about a quarter inch thick plate that I'll be bolting to that and then fixing the actual compressor to that plate. So the cab is up and you can see the plate that I'm going to be mounting to the frame rail there. And that's going to be the spot for the outdoor compressor. And then I'll have the radiator and fan up on this wall here. Now I'm just fastening that plate to the bottom of the uh, compressor and I'm using some rubber feet on the bottom there to help isolate some of that vibration. Here's the compressor all mounted up alongside the uh, hydronic heater you can see and next up we'll get the condenser radiator and fan brackets fabbed up and mounted. Here are the finished brackets for the condenser radiator and fan. Basically, this is just to give some offset and space behind the radiator to allow for airflow. These were then secured to the box by way of glue and ready for mounting. Here we are just hooking up the refrigerant line to the condenser. and then mounting that entire unit to the brackets we installed on the box. Making some more refrigerant line connections on the other side of the condenser there, and then we are running those lines up through the hole to the inside unit. For mounting the inside unit, I've just got a piece of that Kusa composite board. I glued in some threaded inserts and then we're going to just glue that up to the wall where the inside unit can then bolt into that plate with the threaded inserts. We've got everything hooked up now. You can see the compressor there. I just have mounted on the frame rail. Here's the condenser on the box. I'm missing a couple screws, but I'll get that tomorrow. And then the refrigerant lines run up top inside. So you can see the location where we're putting it. We're just putting it kind of between our shower and the toilet. Um, disregard that saw guide. I'm just using that to prop it up there while some glue dries. But yeah, you can see the two uh, fittings, the high and low pressure coming in there. Pretty straightforward. I'm just doing a pressure test right now. Make sure all the fittings are airtight. And I'll go back outside and uh, show you all how that works. Well, today's the day. We're going to get this puppy all charged up. I finally got the fittings I need for the refrigerant bottle. And before we do that, I just wanted to do a quick run through on how these vacuum pumps work. So before you put refrigerant in a system, we have to evacuate all of the air out in the form of a vacuum pump. 
which also helps to get all the moisture out of the system, which is not good for these. So in order to do that, we need a vacuum. So this, here's the pump here, just plugs in to a regular outlet. And what connects to it is a series of these gauges. And we have a low pressure, uh, sorry, a, a low pressure side and a high pressure side. And two different fittings that we're going to be connecting to the AC system on the low pressure and high pressure side. They're actually different sizes, so you can't kind of mess it up. They're designed to be kind of foolproof in that regard. And then this middle guy here, the yellow hose, is what actually attaches to the vacuum pump. And this yellow hose can also be used to fill the refrigerant into the system once the vacuum has been completed. Let's go ahead and get this hooked up. I've already run a vacuum test on the system to make sure there were no leaks. So basically I hooked it up, ran the vacuum down for maybe half an hour, shut everything off, and then you know waited five or six hours to make sure that there was no change in that pressure, which means hopefully there shouldn't be any leaks. So that's an important first step just to make sure all your fittings are good. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and run that vacuum again for a period of time, you know, at least 30 minutes. I'm going to probably do like 40 minutes and then it'll be ready to fill with refrigerant. So let's go ahead and get this hooked up. So up here is our high pressure fitting. The cap even has an H on it. So we'll go ahead and take our red hose, run that up to the high pressure. And I should also mention on this on on this uh, on these two fittings, there's basically an open and closed valve on the connection. And as you thread this in, what it's actually doing is pushing this pin inside there out, which depresses basically a Schrader valve inside of that high, of the fitting to open up the system. So we'll go ahead and make sure it's off. This just pulls back kind of like a standard air chuck. And that is on. The low pressure is down here. It's kind of out of view. All right, low pressure. And then the yellow hose gets connected to the vacuum pump. So the vacuum pump is ready to go. We've got both our high and low connections made. Now we can open up the valves on the high and low connection. We do that by threading that knob in. And then we can open up the two valves on our pressure gauges here. And now we turned on the pump. So right now everything's open and the pump is just drawing out a vacuum which along with that should be pulling out a bunch of the moisture which is really bad for the system and just getting it prepped for taking the refrigerant. So we're gonna let this sit for about half an hour or so like I said, I I've already pressure tested the system, so I know it's good to go. Um, you know, I'm pulling about 25, uh, negative 25 psi on the vacuum, which is pretty good for the altitude I'm at. I think I think your vacuum numbers will vary depending on your altitude. I bet at sea level you get to 30, but I've been seeing about 25 psi on the negative scale. So anyways, we're going to let this sit for a minute and do its thing, and we'll be right back to throw in the refrigerant. All right, so I finished the vacuum, ran it for about 40 minutes, and we are ready. So I closed both of the valves here. I have the high and low still open on the actual AC system. I want the high to be open so that I can monitor pressure periodically and the low is going to be what's letting the actual refrigerant flow in. So 
I disconnected the yellow hose from the vacuum pump, connected it to the can of refrigerant, and then we'll open up that can by screwing down this plunger, and then we'll open this valve here to let that refrigerant into the system. Now it's important to have your system running, so we're going to go ahead and turn everything on, get the compressor going, and then we'll open up that can. All right, let's run inside and turn on the AC. All right, as you can hear, the fan's going. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this bottle. And now we're gonna open up that low side. And we just do it nice and slow. Just let the system kind of build up pressure. So now I've got a reading of about 30 PSI on the low side and about 60 on the high side. And this gauge set actually has a little window where you can see the refrigerant actually going into the system. So the manufacturer said this should take about 650 to 700 grams of refrigerant. Each can is 340 grams. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use two cans. So I can see that the refrigerant is going in. I can see it kind of swirling in the little window here. I'm just holding the can upside down. Alright, so the can's feeling pretty light to me. I don't see any more refrigerant coming through. Let's give it another minute here. I'll give it a good shake. Okay, I think that's it for this can. So I'll go ahead and close this low side. Release the plunger on the can. All right, so second can is in, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. My pressures look spot on. So the high pressure right now is about 170, and the manufacturer recommended kind of 160 for a 60 degree day. It's about 80, so I expect it to be a little bit warmer. And then my low side is about 35, and he said between 35 and 40 for the low side. So everything's looking great. Let's um, shut this down. So I'm gonna just close off these two valves here, but I'll leave the high and low open so we can keep an eye on the pressure. And then I'll just disconnect the bottle. Let's actually hop inside and see if this thing's cooling off, because that's the real test. That is frigid. I am stoked. All right, so um, there's our temperature, 83.4. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this puppy down, close all the windows, and let's let this thing rock here for a bit and see how it does. We have a winner. It's working great, super stoked. Jill is just in here, she's got goosebumps so she had to leave. Uh, it's been half an hour, we're at 70 degrees. We started at 83. I have it set for 21 degrees Celsius, which is about 70, and it's just kind of cycling off and on right now, kind of reached this equilibrium, and it feels great. It's working awesome. Uh, the fan's on high right now. I don't really see you needing to keep it there. It's already starting to kind of automatically fluctuate down, so um, 
I'm going to start taking a look at some of the power numbers and I'll get that info out. But total success, stoked. We have AC, game changer. Just to give you an idea of the noise level, this is on fan speed. Now let me drop it all the way down to one. So this is a fan speed of one. I've had it going for about 15 minutes at this level and it's gone from 70 degrees to 70.7. So it seems to be maintaining it pretty well. Um, this is, like I said, fan, fan speed number one. And I'll start going up. This is number two. Number three. Number four, five, and six. Drop it back down to two. And yeah, I mean, it's holding temperature great. It's about 85 degrees outside. Like I said, we started at uh, 83 in here and it's holding steady at 70, we're at 70.5 right now. So the big question now is how much power does this thing use? We know it can cool down this space, no problem. So to test that, I'm gonna shut down solar and isolate to just one of my battery packs that I have fully charged. And I'm gonna use the Bluetooth BMS monitor to actually calculate how many watts and amps have been drawn out of that battery. So it's about 87 degrees out today. We're at 84 degrees inside right now. And aside from this overhead light, there's no other power coming out of the battery. So the first part of this will be getting the space cooled down to 70. I'm gonna be setting it to 21 degrees Celsius, so about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll see a pretty big power pull for this first part to get it cooled down. And then we'll make note of, of where those numbers are. And then we'll also, I'll, I'm gonna run it for another hour past once it hits, uh, once it gets to its temperature, we'll run it for another hour and just see what energy use we uh, go through to maintain that temperature of 70 degrees. Let's get to it. All right, so here's the app we're gonna be using to monitor the batteries. Let's go ahead and fire up the AC. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on to 21 degrees. We're gonna do the strong mode and then go to 21 degrees, so that's high. And we're off. Okay, so with everything on high, high fan, AC is cranking away. We are chewing through about 900 watts or 37 amps. And I'm gonna step outside. We're still at, uh, we're at 84 degrees. I'm gonna step outside and we'll come back in maybe 15 minutes or so and see where we're at. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We are down almost 10 degrees, we're at 75, we started at 84. We have chewed through eight amps of battery, and this is a 24 volt system, so that would be the equivalent of 16 amps on a 12 volt system. So we've got a few more degrees to go, and we'll check back in a minute. So it's been about 18 minutes, we are down to our set temperature. The unit has started to cycle on and off. What I'm gonna do is turn down the fan speed because it certainly doesn't need to be this high. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this economy mode. I don't know what it really does, but we're gonna just uh, hit eco. And I'm gonna keep the temp though at 21. Okay, so we're set at 21 degrees Celsius. We are down to 70 degrees. It looks like fan speed is on number two and 
let's kind of have a look at some of the numbers. So what I'm seeing right now is a draw of about 600 watts or 24, 25 amps. And what's been happening is this is cycling on and off and it seems to be at about a 50% duty cycle. So for a 30 second period, it starts at about two amps, slowly ramps up to 24. It stays at 24 amps for just a matter of seconds and then it slowly ramps back down. And then for 30 seconds, it stays at that lower amp draw at about one and a half or two. So, so right now we're drawing about uh, 50 watts. So we're at that low stage. It'll sit here for about 30 seconds and then slowly ramp up. So I'm going to make a note of our power used so far. So we have used 12 amps out of our battery on a 24 volt system. So that would be 24 amps on a 12 volt system. So we'll make note of that and then I'm just going to let this sit for an hour and we'll see how many amps we chew through over the next hour now that it's reached its set temp. All right, so the numbers are in. Pretty impressive. Uh, first of all, I should mention, when I said I had the fan on two earlier, it was actually on four. So I took it down a couple notches, so it's actually on two right now. So it's been an hour, and we have used 14 amps from our 24 volt battery bank. So that gives us about 350 watts of power we've used in an hour. So that's that's where we're at. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we're still at our temperature of, we're at 70.5. We started at 84, it's about 87 outside. And we're just on the fan setting of two. And like I mentioned, it's just doing that cycling on and off and 350 watts per hour at this rate so super happy with that so thanks a ton for watching i hope you found this useful um, give us a like and a subscribe we should appreciate it and uh, i hope this can help you make some better decisions for your build and an ac system all i can say is we are stoked really happy with how this came out and please reach out if you have any questions all right catch you on the next one